There have been children who have murdered throughout history. Mary Bell was 10 years old when she murdered two boys. Juliet Holm and Pauline Parker were in their teens when they murdered Juliet's mother. Also, Clementine Barnabet was the leader of a cult who had the black community in fear after murdering several families. Even so, none of them were executed. Instead, they were let go. However, there have been other children who weren't so lucky. George Stinney was 14 years old when he was executed on the electric chair for allegedly murdering two little girls. There are thoughts that he was innocent and 70 years later, the conviction was overturned. Celia was a slave who had been repeatedly raped by her slave owner and she was hung for murdering him. In the late 1700s, there was 12-year-old Hannah Akuish. She was executed for the murder of a six-year-old girl. Hannah Akuish, a Native American girl, was an orphan. At an early age, she was abandoned by her mother and didn't know her father. It was said that she was not mentally sound, and it seemed like there was thoughts that she had a mental disability, but there, this was the late 1700s, and there aren't many artifacts on Hannah before the crime. The only thing that I found was that she was in a series of foster homes, and it might be my ignorance, but I did not know there was a foster care system back then. I believe maybe if there was, it's definitely not in the form that we have today, but I did find that interesting. In June 1786, Hannah Akuish had her encounter with Eunice Bowles, her victim. During a harvest, six-year-old Eunice Bowles accused Hannah of stealing strawberries. The emotions that Hannah must have felt was embarrassment and anger towards the girl. Therefore, Hannah started plotting her revenge. Five weeks later, on July 21st, 1786, Hannah lured Eunice into the woods by telling her she would give her calico. Calico is a soft fabric that seems to have been popular during those times. When the two girls got into the forest, Hannah beat and strangled Eunice to death. Eunice's body was found next to a stone wall on the road between New London and Norwich in Connecticut. Hannah had tried to cover the murder by covering Eunice's body with rocks to make it seem like the stone wall accidentally collapsed and killed the six-year-old girl. People started questioning kids to find out what really happened. When Hannah was questioned, she told them that she had seen four boys in the area that Eunice's body was found. This did not convince the people who questioned her, so they took her to see the body. When Hannah did, she confessed to murdering Eunice. Twelve-year-old Hannah Akuish stood trial. Even though many thought she was not fit to stand trial due to her disability, the judge didn't care. He sentenced her to hang. His reasoning was that her execution would be a message to the local community. She was Native American, so now I wonder if the local community was the Native Americans, and I wouldn't put it past the people back in those times, so it might be that, or it just might be the community that they all lived in. I don't know what that actually meant. Throughout the entire trial, Hannah didn't show any emotion to the point that it was said she seemed unconcerned. On December 20th, 1786, Hannah stood in front of the old meeting house where a crowd had gathered. While she was walking to the hanging rope, Hannah was silent, but her eyes said another story. It was said that it seemed she had fear in her eyes and she kept trying to look around, hoping that someone would rescue her. In front of all those people, 12-year-old Hannah Okuish was executed by hanging after thanking the sheriff for his kindness. Her execution is the last execution in Connecticut's history. She is also thought to be the youngest female to be executed in U.S. history. This was heartbreaking to find, 12 years old and executed. I remember seeing the pictures of George Stinney circulating in different social media platforms when they were putting him in the electric chair and my heart ached. I think it also might be because he was probably innocent. Should a child murderer not be executed because of his or her age? The answer will be different depending on who you ask. For me, I am torn. She planned the murder for five weeks, killed a six-year-old girl over something frivolous as being accused of stealing a few strawberries, and then setting up the crime scene so it seemed like an accident. Is she really that innocent because of her mental disability? In those days, they didn't have mental health resources like we have now, and even now, ours 
I'm talking about the people in the US, ours is not the greatest. Therefore, she would have probably have gotten locked up in prison with adults or in a mental institution. Seeing the deplorable prisons and mental institutions of the past, maybe Hannah was better off being executed than suffering in those places. As I said, I'm torn. I just hope that Eunice didn't suffer too much while was, she was being strangled and beaten. I also hope that Hannah, even though she was a murderer, didn't suffer as well. I mean, she was 12 and maybe because of her mental disability, she couldn't see the difference between right or wrong. I don't know, because it's weird that she was able to plot the murder for five weeks and come up with a plan to try to stage it as an accident. I don't know. I would love to hear what other people thought because this one was just a little hard for me to f figure out if I feel it was right that she was executed and, you know, put in prison at 12 years old or I don't know. It just was very hard to figure to like figure out for me what I thought should have been done. Thanks again for watching the video. If you like the content, please consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and also sharing it with someone. I will talk to you next week.